What's up, guys? Dr. Chris Park here. Let's uh, drink a little coffee. It's my uh, Nirvana mug. All right. So, I had a question about how do you taper off Xanax. So, um, you know, Xanax is different, right, than opiates. So, Xanax is a benzodiazepine. It's a different type of medication typically used to treat panic attacks, panic disorder, Um probably best used if if taken um, very limited, right? Just for a panic attack um, in certain situations, right? But what happens is a lot of times people, you know, they start taking it, it calms them down, they feel better, but over time they develop dependence and tolerance and their dose escalates. Um, and Xanax is tricky because it has a very short half-life. And that's going to come into play when we talk about stopping it later. But so in other words, it kind of wears off quickly. So you feel like you need to redose sooner. Um, now, some people take Xanax as prescribed and they're not on like super high doses. And, you know, uh, even if they're taking it daily, maybe they're on a small dose at night to help them rest or something like that, you know, but um, it can still be problematic to just stop it, you know, uh, cold turkey. Uh, so Xanax, it, like I said, it's a benzodiazepine and those medications are very dangerous, um, to stop. Like the withdrawal syndromes can be life threatening, uh, similar to, uh, the way alcohol affects some people, um, when they have severe alcohol withdrawal. So it should always be done under medical supervision. If you are looking at stopping um, Xanax or tapering off or whatever, it should be done um, with medical supervision. You, you need to talk to your doctor. You you need to have a plan in place and your doctor needs to know you don't need to just stop this medicine, you know, uh, without discussing, okay? Because a plan needs to be put in place. Now, there's different techniques and I've used this with, with patients over time. Uh, some patients, they weren't, you know, they didn't have the the uh the signs of addiction but they did have dependence on the medicine and we've talked before about the difference between addiction and dependence okay so and they just didn't feel like it was um as effective or or maybe they just didn't feel like they needed it anymore or maybe they needed to stop it for other medical reasons you know that, that maybe it was uh perhaps dangerous could interact with some other medications or some other medical conditions that they had. And it was determined, hey, we'll try to stop this medication. But because they've been on it for a while, it wouldn't be good just to stop. So we were able to just maybe slowly taper down the dose over time. And that might mean, you know, reducing the dose every month for several months. Um, and that might work for a lot of people. But for some people, they may be on higher doses. They may actually be addicted to it. They may be, you know, taking uh, large amounts and then, you know, coming off and then and then and then taking again when they could get the med the uh, the drug. Um, or maybe they had just dependence. They weren't addicted, but they still, you know, it, it was dangerous. They they weren't able to just slowly taper for whatever reason. Maybe they had cravings. Maybe they had withdrawal just doing that, okay? And because of Xanax short half-life, it can make it difficult to taper. So oftentimes, uh, if, if I'm not able to just slowly reduce the dose over time, or if somebody needs to come off the medication quickly because they are a danger to themselves, we can change them to a long-acting benzodiazepine. And this might be something like Valium or Librium or uh, Clorazepate, and then, taper that uh, because the long acting medications are easier to taper. There's less withdrawal uh, problems, etc. cetera. Um, and that's usually um, when I used to work, you know, uh, at the hospital, we would detox folks like who came in uh, with a benzo addiction or alcohol addiction. You know, we would place them on a long acting benzo. And over the next few days, we would just slowly taper that. And that would typically help, uh, reduce the risk of seizure um, and death. But again, I just want to, you know, explain that to you. There is a very high risk of serious medical problems, which could even include death. So if you're looking at tapering this, talk to your doctor, get a plan um, in place. 
Uh, and it's very possible if you are abusing high amount of benzos and you're trying to stop, you need to be medically supervised in a uh, hospital um, if available. Um, and that, you know, um, is the basics of it. So again, in some patients, we can just slowly taper over time. This might take months. Um, but in other patients, we need to change the medicine to a long-acting benzodiazepine, which is easier to taper. Um, and we can taper that off a little bit quicker even uh, for folks and reduce you know, that, those uh, serious risks and complications. Now, there's also other medications I often use because one, why is somebody on uh, a benzodiazepine? Well, they probably have anxiety. So I wanna make sure we've also got the anxiety appropriately treated, which is not always easy, but uh, you know, so that they're not like going back to the medication just to self-medicate, okay? So is there a reason if somebody's abusing it, or, well, why are they abusing it? You know, what are they self-medicating? Or is it is it a PTSD? Is it just a generalized anxiety disorder? Is it a panic disorder? Are they agoraphobic? You know, do they have severe depression and uh, that they're just kind of making worse by depressing themselves further with these drugs? You know, it's just, um, you gotta get into the psychology of it as well because you want to know, okay, now what do we need to do uh, to stabilize this patient in all aspects of their life, because it's not just the medication. Um, now, obviously, we want to keep them alive, so we want to do this to taper the medicine and stop the medicine safely. Um, but patients can also have like severe symptoms coming off these type benzos. You know, you can have post acute withdrawal syndrome. We've talked about that with opiates. You can have post acute withdrawal with like uh, your typical antidepressants as well, SSRIs. Um, and so it can just be, um, you got to take a comprehensive look when you're talking about reducing medication, stopping medications, um, treating addiction. Um, you know, no one pill is going to fix everything. We've got to look at it from all angles and try to approach it in a safe and effective way and one that like, you know, meets the patient where they're at in a way. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it doesn't mean that the patient is free of responsibility. You've got to, you've got to take responsibility for yourself, but the, but the, the, uh, the medical community and we've got to also, you know, reach out and work, uh, through the social situations that has led to the addiction. And we got to figure out a compromise, um, on how we can go about this in a better way. Now, I guess I got off on a tangent there, right? Because I, I, I sometimes get frustrated with with um, the way a lot of folks who are struggling with addiction get treated um, by the medical community. But I, I think that's changing. I mean, I, I see I see a lot of positive steps uh, on our end, you know, um, to make it easier for people to get the treatment that they need. Okay, but treating addiction is never easy. Uh, treating uh, anxiety is not easy. Treating depression is not easy, man. Um, the world we live in, we are full of despair. And uh, we have to look outside of the world in a way, you know, uh, to see the hope that exists uh, so that we can live in the world and make it a better place. So, all right, guys. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. I'm sure this probably raised more questions than I answered. Feel free to shoot me some comments. Please, please, please talk to your doctor. Do not take medical advice from the internet. Do not try to change your medicines or whatever uh, on your own. Just talk to your doc, get a plan in place, figure out what's the best way for you to stay alive and to be free from your addictions and to work on your depression, your anxiety, um, uh, and just to, to have better mental health and a plan to go forward. Guys, you can do it. I see it every day. Every day I see success, uh, people who have been at the lowest of lows and they are now moving on with their life and getting into just better, a better place for them, you know? So, all right, peace.